You've had your paint palette mixed and in use now for a few days. You notice that your paint piles are getting tacky and some have even dried up completely. What now? Well, today I'll show you how I remix my paint colors. So you can see here, I'm using my palette knife to kind of test the paint piles that are at the top, the pure colors. And the ones that are definitely not a consistency that I want to work with, I'm going to just scrape them off and replace with some fresh paint. So there we have a um, box cutter. I just scrape that away. This is a glass palette, so the paint scrape off quite easily. And that is my Terra Rosa color. So we're gonna add a new fresh pile of Terra Rosa. You don't wanna work with paint that's at a consistency that you're not gonna enjoy the painting process. So if you find that your paint is tacky and you're just really not getting the kind of brush stroke that you want, don't keep struggling with tacky, hardened paint. <laughs> Get it off your palette and mix up a new batch of colors so that you can enjoy the painting process. So I'm just gonna keep checking my paint piles and scraping away the areas that are hard and that I just don't want on my palette any longer. So I'm working with Titanium White, Yellow Ochre Pale, Terra Rosa, Van Dyke Brown, and Philo Blue. Hi everybody, I just wanted to hop on and say thank you so much to all of my subscribers. You guys are the best. And you may have noticed that there are some commercials coming into my videos nowadays. And I just appreciate that you guys are sticking through those and still watching the videos. This is gonna help me grow the channel and make it even better. I've got some wonderful things planned in the future coming up and I'm gonna keep dropping you guys a video every week all about portrait painting and figurative painting and helping you to become the painters that you wanna be. So I just really wanted to come on and say thank you so much and I will uh, keep making videos. Now that the top row where I keep my pure colors is tidied up, all the hard paints removed, I'm going to start checking the piles that I've mixed here on the palette. And I'll remove an area and then I am going to put a little clove oil down on the glass palette. With a paper towel, the clove oil helps you to rub out any of those little bits of paint areas that are still left. Just, I like to have a nice tidy palette to mix my paint on. Plus the clove oil helps keep your paint nice and lush longer. And bonus tip about clove oil, <laughs> the um, scent of the clove oil is supposed to help improve or increase your creative thinking. And you can see here, it really picks up the paint. It does just as good of a job as if you were using turpentine, odorless, or not. So I'm pushing down some of this white paint pile because this is going to be set up as a vertical palette. And if you just smash your original piles down a little bit, it'll help keep them from sliding down. So there's your bonus tip number two. So let's mix up this pile here. It's kind of a light mauve pinkish color. It's gonna be used as a flesh tone predominantly. Um, start with a little titanium white, add a touch of terra rosa, and then we're going to take down some of that saturation by adding, I believe, yeah, a little touch of the Van Dyke Brown after we clean off the palette knife. Don't want to contaminate your original piles too much. <laughs> I'm not the most diligent when it comes to uh, not dipping into my original piles <laughs> and contaminating them just a little bit. But you can see that definitely took down some of that saturation. And we're just going to keep mixing that until it matches that pile that we're trying to recreate. So I find it helpful to add little increments of paint. I don't like to add a giant dollop of color. I'd rather build up to match the paint pile that I'm mixing a little more slowly. And you just keep asking yourself, does it need, is it too red or is it too blue or is it too yellow? Or where do I need to go? Does my paint pile need to be bluer 
Does it need to be more red? Does it need to be more yellow? So you have to figure out which direction you're going in. So it looks like we've matched up pretty good here. So let's get rid of the old pile now that's hard and not of any use to us. <laughs> and we've mixed it up perfectly. So we're just gonna scooch it over. As you guys know, I like to have my mid values kind of a, in a middle row. And I mix my lighter values towards the bottom of my palette and my darker values on top of the middle row. So it's dark, mid, light in value. So here we are mixing up that lighter pink color now. And I dipped into that um, color that we just made to help get us going in that direction. And then again, I'm just gonna ask myself, does it need to be more red? Does it need to be more yellow? Or does it need to be more blue? And then I will take from that original pure color pile and keep mixing it until it matches. I'd say that's a perfect match. So let's get rid of that pile. We don't need it anymore. Off the palette you go. All right, what are we gonna mix now? We're gonna go for that more saturated reddish color. Well, look at that. Just some Terra Rosa and some white, and voila, we pretty much have it. <laughs> so that was easy. Okay, so I got rid of those piles of paint and the middle area didn't get any of the clove oil when we wiped off the surrounding outer part of the palette. So I'm just gonna put a little bit in the middle here and just clean that up. And then I can replace <laughs> that mid value, more saturated reddish color. And I'll have a little clove oil underneath of it, which will help keep it soft and luscious a little bit longer. All right, let's mix up this darker color flesh tone. So here you go, bonus tip number three. The beauty of using a limited palette. So here I have five colors and it allows you to remix your palette more easily. If you don't have a ton of paint colors, your original um, colors, then mixing, again, the piles is going to be so much more easy. When you're mixing your piles and you're noticing that it's maybe a little too saturated and you wanna to tone it down, but you want to darken it, then you wanna grab one of your more neutral, darker colors. Like here, I'm grabbing the Van Dyke Brown. So I'm mixing and it's definitely doing the job. It's becoming more neutral. But if you take it in a direction to where now you think it's maybe a tad too dark in value, but it's the right amount of neutral, then you can grab a little of the titanium white to lighten it up. But titanium white, won't punch up any of the saturation or remove any of the neutral coolness that you've added. It'll just help and it, uh, it works well to cool off and neutralize a color. So there you have it. We've got that one mixed perfectly. So we're just gonna put it in place and then we will remove the hardened dead color. And I'm making a few little extra piles from that pile we just mixed so that I can have a place to start when we um, mix up. I'm gonna mix up a new color here. I'm just gonna lighten that one we just mixed up so I have a nice neutral light value of that color. So that's a new color on the palette, which is perfectly fine to do. If you are mixing and you know that you wanna have a certain color, then you can go ahead and add some new piles. So here we're mixing up this darker kind of warm color and we got that pretty quickly. So it's perfectly matched. And now we can clean up the palette again. All right, now we're gonna mix up this nice dark reddish brown color, starting with some Terra Rosa here. 
I'll mix it just to the side of it so we can be close enough to that pile to see how well it's matching and where we need to take it. Now I like to have two darks on my palette. I like a warm dark, which we got pretty quickly, and now we're going to mix up our cool dark. So you may be wondering why I grabbed for yellow if this is a cool dark. Well, I know that Van Dyke Brown has kind of a purplish tint to it. So purple and yellow are complementary colors, so they're gonna neutralize each other. So it's gonna neutralize that Van Dyke Brown to a more gray, and then I can work with that as a neutral. And to cool it off even more, I can go ahead and dip into some of that Philo Blue and that'll help take it to a very cool um, grayish dark type uh, tint. And again, we're gonna clean up our palette and make room for our final piles. So I'm noticing from my reference material that I'm going to need some warm flesh tone colors. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up some new color piles here that are going to be on the warmer side and then I'll make a middle value which is usually where I like to start. I like to start with the mid value then I can either take it lighter or take it darker from there and I have a, a ready to go starting point. <laughs> So I'm just gonna take a little bit of that, add it to the titanium white, and there we have our lighter. So I have a nice um, light, kind of mauve color, and then I have a light neutral, and now I have a nice light warm color. And I'm gonna get a little bit um, more saturated mid value there, and I'm just gonna have some nice uh, options available to me when I get back to painting. So here we have a little update on where I'm at with my large scale Western painting with my three cowboys. And I'm just uh, working here into the face of the middle figure and finish up some of the eyes, move down into the uh, lower part of the face after I paint in this ear. Now when you're painting ears, you want to do it with a lot of heat. The blood that runs into the flesh of the ears is close to the surface and especially if light is beaming kind of onto the ear directly you're going to see a lot of glow and because the light can almost travel through the ear it's so transparent and thin but this ear is in a bit of shadow from the hat so I don't have to take it um, as hot as I would as if it were hitting light directly. So I'm using a pretty small brush here to paint this ear. It's a zero. It's a Rosemary and Company and it's her red dot um, line. It's kind of a simulated sable brush. So it's very soft and I just love it. I used pretty much two brushes for the majority of this face and it was this zero red dot and it was a number four Eclipse Filbert. And again, that's the Rosemary and Company. The other thing to take note of is I have positioned the lighting for my painting in the upper left side, which is a little bit different than the actual uh, reference image. So, I mean, it kind of looks like it's on the left, but I've moved it up a little bit higher. And I, you just never have to be a slave to your reference material. Just remember, you're the master of your painting and you can make the lighting change if you need to. So I am just really punching up the fact that the lighting is in the upper left and I want to really give depth and volume to the face, especially this amazing mustache. So I'm going to put some darks down on the bottom uh, right side of that mustache because that's going to be created from a shadow where the light is hitting the more fuller parts of the hairs. And I'm really thinking all the time when I'm painting the face especially, how can I punch up the volume? I don't want my face to look flat. And you do that by paying attention to your lighting. And here we go, I finished the face. All right, let's take a look at my third figure. 
And this guy, uh, <laughs> he's looking down. He's actually uh, loading his gun with gunpowder. So the eyes are gazing downward. They almost look closed, but once you see the figure in its entirety, you'll understand that he's looking down and not asleep. <laughs> So that was a thing I kept thinking about. I want to make sure that he doesn't look like he's sleeping. So I think when you see it in context, um, that'll help. But again, that lighting situation is coming from the top left. So I want to really push that idea and punch up a little bit of the contrast. And by doing that, it also increases the level of volume that you see in the face and we avoid flat face. So if you guys have paintings and you just feel like they're not quite where you want them to be, well, there's a couple of things you can do. You can go into the description and grab my free six question list. These are six questions that you can ask yourself and it'll help you figure out perhaps what you can do to improve your painting. Or you can go to sjcportraitcourse.com and you can check out my critique options. I've got three packages there. You can buy one critique. You can get a little grouping of critiques. There's a couple different bundles and I will personally critique and help you improve your painting. So you can check that out. You can learn more on that site sjcportraitcourse.com. Thanks for watching guys. I appreciate you so much and I will see you in the next one.